Well, my reaction is specific to New York community, and then it's also broad. But on the NYCB side, I think it's fascinating. I did a call with my clients last week where I said, look, I'm pretty sure I'm going to need to sell this. I'm pretty sure that regulation is going to come in and really cripple smaller banks. And here I wake up this morning, actually, I saw it before I went to bed last night, and thought, oh, my God, the game has changed for New York Community Bank. So this goes back to the previous conversation where Surat and Joe were saying, like, it's really haves and have-nots, right? And one bank's loss is going to be another bank's gain, and that's exactly what this is. So you see Signature Bank, it's hugely accretive to New York Community Bank's earnings. They're going to be up 20 percent from this. Their total book value is going to increase by 15 percent. It, this is one of the interesting things, too, that I think is really insightful. So New York Community Bank just closed on their Flagstar deal. That took nearly two years to get down, done. This thing with Signature went down in, I think, three or five days. And it's an enormous vote of confidence by the regulators. So they're strengthening their deposit base. They're reducing their reliance on higher-cost wholesale borrowings. They're paying down their debt with the $25 billion of cash. They're getting 130 private bankers who bring in these really low-cost or no, non-interest-bearing deposits. And the deal is capital neutral, so there's no need to raise equity. So I think it's like a fascinating thing to watch this juxtaposed against First Republic today. Yeah, one, one quick question, Jenny, while we have you. We're showing the dividend yield at 7.84%. Yeah. Do you think that plays a factor at all in the investor interest in here? Because obviously the banking sector is being seen as a little bit shaky right now. No, I think right now, like even last week for me, I was presuming that things were going to get bad for them and that the dividend was off the table. I think this is a statement on the regulator's vote of confidence, earnings being accretive, total book value going up. Um, and I just think it's really indicative of what I think is going to come, where we're going to, where, you know, it's interesting. Frank, can I just digress for a nanosecond on this? Digress. Oh. Okay, thanks. So I started in the business in 1994 at a bank interest stock hedge fund, and that was at the beginning of this bank interest stock merger boom, where, where everyone was combining with everyone. And fast forward 29 years, and there's still way, way, way too many banks out there. And to, I think it was either Surat or Joe earlier who was saying, you know, we might be done with, if, if the banking industry consolidates, we might have four or five banks, they'll be sleepy, they'll be regulated like utilities, there'll be a handful, you know, of big banks. I'm not sure that's not the way to go. And that really started 29 years ago, yet it hasn't made the progress that it probably should have. So I look at this as maybe something indicative of the future where we are going to see the bigger and more stable banks really gobble up the smaller ones. All right, Jenny Harrington, we've got to have to leave the conversation there. By the way, a lot of people agree with you. Wedbush calls this a sweetheart deal. Uh, KBW oh, says yeah. uh, popping accretion when it comes to EPS at rock bottom valuation. Jenny Harrington, thank you very much. All right, we're going to turn our attention back to First Republic Bank. Shares now down 46%. Joe, I've got to come back over to you. I mean, we're seeing dramatic moves lower as we see some of the big names in finance trying to help this bank out. And clearly, there's more assistance on the way, or at least it appears to be, according to sources. Listen, you know, it's, 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 as I said before, it's, it's very difficult to arrest a asset that's in distress. And it's even more difficult to do it in the middle of a trading session. So I'm somewhat surprised about the announcement in the middle of a trading session. To me, it would have been more prudent to do this before the open or after the market closes. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a significant challenge. I'm not very sure why someone would step in and buy shares of this company without really having further knowledge of exactly what the details are in this announcement. I think that's a fair assessment. We see the shares fall 20% in the matter of, what, two or three minutes following these headlines. So, Rob, very quickly, um, concerning for you as, as a shareholder to watch a stock fall precipitously like this? It is, but then I go back to next week, to last week, and the stock was like a roller coaster. I mean, it was up you know, 30, 40 percent within minutes and then it was down. So I think he, we, we just don't know what's going on. So it's hard to speculate. Right. You know, could it be a potential equity deal at a certain price? Is it above where it is now? We right. don't know. So, you know, I, I think you're getting people saying, let me just sell and I'll ask questions later right. or, you know, to that point.